In this video, we'll be creating generative music that uses polyrhythm, and polymeter. What's the difference between polyrhythm and polymeter? People including myself often get them confused and think that polyrhythm is where two different time signatures are used at the same time. That's actually polymeter, so I'll explain that in more detail in a little bit. Polyrhythm is a lot simpler and more common than polymeter. It is different rhythmic subdivisions that fit in the same interval of time, usually within the measure. An example will explain this much better. So we have a quarter note kick drum in 4-4. And we can introduce polyrhythm by layering a triplet hi-hat. So in the same amount of time that kick drum is played four times within one measure, hi-hat will be played three times. Let's listen to five against two. So in the same amount of time that two kicks are played, there will be five hi-hat notes. Polymeter is a bit more complex than polyrhythm. Again, polymeter is where two different time signatures or meters are used and desynchronization happens. So here's a 4-4 pattern where the first note is a hi-hat and the other notes are kicks. And here's a similar pattern but this one is in 5-4. So there's an extra quarter note kick. Okay, let's listen to them together. As we can hear, the first note, which is the hi-hat, of the two patterns don't line up after each pattern is played once. That extra quarter note in 5-4 desynchronizes the two patterns. They do eventually line up after the 4-4 pattern is played 5 times and the 5-4 pattern is played 4 times. Or quarter note in each pattern is played 20 times. 5 times 4 is where we get that number. Polymeter is great for spicing up simple musical ideas. For example, we have a bass line in 4-4 here. And we'll first have a melody in 4-4 also. Very simple musical idea, kind of boring. But we can easily make it more interesting by having a melody in 5-4. And you can imagine how interesting things will get once we use polymeter in generative music. So that'll be for the second half of this video. You can download the example patches in the description. Please do watch the video first to understand them so that you can use them and also customize them according to your musical style. Alright, let's get started. In this previous tutorial, we made a musical sequencer and we use it to create an eighth note pattern. Let's quickly review this patcher. We have a metro object right here and it's connected to a counter algorithm. So for every eighth note time interval, we increment by one. And we're using a modulo right here so that the counter goes from 1 to 8 and it keeps on repeating forever. We can then send these outputs to a playable sequencer and create drum patterns like this. Okay, let's spice things up by using odd number divisions. Let's do a 3 against 4 polyrhythm. First step is to modify these so that we get a quarter note. Okay, copy and paste this whole thing. What we want to do is fit three notes in the same amount of time that four quarter notes are played. So we simply add a divide by three right here and change this to a one. We have the whole note time here and we divide that by three, which gives us a triplet. And we only need to change one more thing. 
We change this modulo to a 3 so that we have the counter loop from 1 to 3 instead of 1 to 4. Okay, that's it. Let's have a listen. We can use this technique to do quintuplets. Let's fit 5 notes within 1 quarter note. We have the whole note time here and we divide that by 4, giving us a quarter note. And we further divide that by 5, which gives us a quintuplet. We then change this modulo to a 5 so that we have the counter loop from 1 to 5. Let's have a listen. And to make this patcher even more exciting, let's make it generative. Let's generate a new pattern every two measures. So these are the pattern generator algorithm. It's using a random number generator, probability, and the gate to decide if a note is played or not. And the bang message is sent from here. So after the quarter note is played 8 times, a bang is outputted. And that bang message is delayed by almost a quarter note. So the delay time is the length of a quarter note, but shorter by 10 milliseconds. Therefore, a new pattern is generated right before the start of the third measure. This is to avoid an issue where the first note of the previous pattern will play at the same time as a new pattern is generated. I'll put a diagram or an example right here to hopefully explain this better. We didn't have to do it for this particular patcher because the first note will always be played 100% of the time. But this technique will come in handy, especially in the next section of this video when we generate a melody. Alright, we have a complex drum beat generator that should spice up your algorithmic music projects. Okay, let's move on to using Polymeter in Pure Data. And it's actually super easy to do. So we first have a bass line and melody both in 4-4. Okay, let's spice it up by having the melody in 5-4. And it's simply just changing this modulo number to a 5 and adding another note. And that's it. Super simple but musically complex. Okay, let's make the melody generative. So when should a new pattern be generated? It makes the most sense for a new melody to start playing when the first note of the two patterns line up. It lines up after each pattern plays 20 quarter notes. Alright, let's test it out. Perfect. We can of course do 4-4 against 11-4 if we wanted to get real spicy. Polyrhythm and polymeter are great techniques that will add complexity to a generative music patcher. Alright, have some fun with them, and I'll see you in the next video.